to Waterless Cries of Maruga, a story by Khadija Stewart, Joshua Prentice, and Dareem Jeffrey. As the drowsy sun stretched his hands over the small village of Le and Maruga, its residents awoke from their slumber. Two neighbors, Derek, a medium-built man of Afro-Trinity scent, affectionately known as Big Eye by the community, and Harry, a tall, muscular man of Indo-Trinidadian descent, jumped out of their beds simultaneously and headed for their showers. Eek! They turned their showers on, but to their dismay, nothing but hopes and dreams flowed out. Not as nonsense again. It's at least four times a week there is no water, said Derek in a low and annoyed voice. Harry, on the other hand, had a full-blown meltdown and was totally enraged by the situation because the community's water was struck for the one millionth time. They both shared in their water frustrations and stormed outside, greeting each other with faces of dismay mixed with frustration and sadness. Derek walked into Harry's yard to ask if he or the other neighbors had any water and they were all in the same boat with not a drop coming from their pipes. Derek placed his hands onto Harry's shoulder and suggested that they check the water pipes nearby. Just then, Derek's neighbor Mark could be heard from the deep recesses of his house screaming, Oh gosh, come the man, flush, please, my girlfriend coming just now. Laughter grew pregnant in the boys' mouth, and together they burst out laughing as they couldn't believe what they just heard. Together they proceeded down the roadside, and Harry exclaimed, All this water was producing and not a drop could reach us. Derek boy, where the water really going? Derek started explaining that the Water and Sewage Authority, Wasa, has serious problems managing the country's water resources and that they lose millions each year because almost half of the water produced is lost when either when they're treating it, transporting it to the citizens or sometimes because of how we use it. This unfortunately creates a cycle of water wastage, improper maintenance and low profits. Harry scratched his head and said, hmm... Boy, them ain't making money cause they wasting the water and now they ain't have no money to fix the pipes and because of that, we don't get any water. That's real foolishness, yes? Harry's ears then perked. Look, the damn pipe leaking again, he exclaimed, but Derek was confused as to where to look. Hey, big eyes, how you still can't see? Look to your right, exclaimed Harry. They both inched closer to the gully containing the pipe and Derek tripped off. I so sick and fed up with this crap. Look water wasting away and we have none in our homes. This nonsense had to stop. People out there suffering left, right and center. Oh, for goodness sake, shouted Derek. But he didn't stop there. Wasser does have over 2,000 leaks a month and all he's continued to do is patch up a broken system with one set of inefficiencies and all old all, all solutions. And all that is do is create more wastage by the day. How that making any sense? exclaimed Derek. A deep bellowing roar of gushing water accompanied the gallons of water spewing out into the nearby land and flowing into the nearby river. Best I did bring down some soap and water and thing, yes, and take a bath right here, said Harry. His neighbor laughed at the notion. Trust me, brother, you're going to contaminate the river and kill all the fish and them with all that stench you would wash in, said Derek, and they both killed themselves laughing. Derek then folded his arms and started thinking to himself how much this problem really affects his hometown as well as the other rural communities in Trinidad. What many people like Harry and a lot of citizens in TNT don't realize is that most of the country's water infrastructure is below ground and very old, so we really don't see or feel the problem until it reaches a breaking point of complete chaos. Water specialists have tirelessly tried to explain this to the government, but they simply overlook the issue because we don't check to see exactly how much water people are using or even being treated and wasted, so there is no real proof on the severity of the issue. And when you throw climate change into the mix, things are expected to get worse when we have to deal with more storms, droughts and uncertainty. Derek then shouted, year after year and they can't fix these problems. We build in skyscrapers and fancy buildings but the foundations are on sand and leaky pipes. Incredible! Waterless showers, I can't even bathe out here smelling like a wet old socks. Waterless pots, I can't even make a little breakfast this morning. You know, it have things like the spread of diseases with this COVID thing going around. I can't even wash my hands or bathe when I come home because we ain't have no water. And all of this is because of Wasa and the poor management. 
Harry then turned to Derek and said, Is there anything we could do to fix this? Derek chuckled. Sure, maybe they could control all the pressure that probably busts in the pipes or start checking to see exactly how much water we use in. Think they call it metering. We definitely had to start looking at the laws and things too. And well, Wasta itself because there's always a bacchanal going on inside of there. And oh gosh, the technology. I sure is old thing that I'm using still. The road instantly started shaking and rumbles could be heard as pebbles on the poorly paved road started to dance. Their gaze then drifted off into the distance at an oncoming water truck and Harry laughed to himself and said, Maybe one day things would change, yes boy? Both men then casually strolled back to their property and proceeded to finally start their day as the water truck arrived. They both stood near the standpipes and Harry, turning to Derek, said, The greatest trick our politicians ever pulled, boy, was convincing the people and them that the water didn't exist.